What's up, Red Sox Nation? Today is July 22nd, and this is your July 22nd Sox Vlog. My name is Mark Chikaris. Sox Vlogs are brought to you by Guy Boston Sports over at GuyBostonSports.com. And today we're going to kind of take a look at the next 14 days, what that looks like for the Red Sox, talk about Nathan Avaldi a little bit, um, kind of basically discuss how this is, this is it. This is the make or break for the Boston Red Sox. Um, we should know really um, what the Red Sox should be doing moving forward here as a trade deadline sort of looms. Um, we should know by Saturday morning, in my, in my opinion. Saturday morning will tell us whether or not the Red Sox should be buyers or sellers um, during the trade deadline season. And more importantly, you know, who stays, who goes. I don't really want to get into who do you get back, you know, because there, there are names of guys floated out there. I mean, no, you know, we had heard Zach Wheeler was going to join the Red Sox and then it ended up being uh, Andrew Kashner. Like, I don't really want to play that game. This is a quick vlog. Um, but I will tell you who I think the Red Sox should sell if, you know, really if, uh, if they have the chance to make a deal and to get anything in return for some of these guys, uh, we can discuss maybe, uh, maybe that coming up too. Um, but let's look first. So ultimately, you know, the Red Sox, uh, I, I've conceded the division. The Yankees going to win the, the, the division, uh, but the Red Sox are still in the wild card hunt. And I think their most important games are against, um, Tampa. I don't think the Red Sox games against the Yankees matter too much only in the respect that you always want to win so that if Tampa loses, you're making up ground. Um, Oakland is also in the mix for that wild card. Um, as well, there's a lot of other teams in the mix for the wild card and, 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 and the Red Sox have a, have quite a few hurdles to jump. I think there's like four other teams right now, uh, four teams right now that are in the wild card hunt seriously. And, um, you know, the Red Sox are at the bottom of that list right now as far as you know the standings and where they're at so just real quick so coming off a horrible 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 weekend um in baltimore um i mean this is the worst baltimore series probably since the end of 2011 when the chicken and beer crew um you know blew it there uh, at the end of the season freaking call carl crawford couldn't make that catch and then he you know throws some crappy ball crappy throw at a home plate and uh, Red Sox uh, don't make the playoffs in that one. But uh, here's what they got coming up. They have the Rays. They're at. They're in Tampa for three games. Uh, today's matchup is Erod versus Jalen Beeks. Jalen Beeks is 5-0 and with a 2.78 ERA right now for the Tampa Bay Rays. Remember Jalen Beeks? Yeah, he used to be on the Red Sox. Um, not, a, not a great pitching prospect, but... Then again, I don't know. It seems like when pitchers leave the Red Sox, they tend to get better, especially young pitchers. So especially if they go to the Rays, because the Rays have like pitching wizards or something over there. I swear to God, like, you know, I've talked about it on my podcast, Balls Deep uh, Red Sox podcast. Um, we've talked about we We want to hire the entire Rays front office, bring them into Boston and give them a, back up the Brinks truck and give them give them all that money so they can do what they do with the Rays, but with a big market team. That's a whole, we've talked about that a million times before. So it was Nathan Evaldi. All right, so we get Evaldi back. Rays get um, uh, Jalen Beeks. Uh, obviously, um, you know, Evaldi's been hurt. He's only pitched 21 innings this year. He has a 6.00 ERA, so he fits in nicely with the rest of the rotation. And Evaldi will be, he won't be in the rotation. He's going to move to closer. And the reason why he's moving to closer is because they didn't get a closer in the off season, which they should have done. We all know it. The bullpen by committee does not work. This is the third time now the Red Sox have tried to do this bullpen by committee. Um, and it does not work. Um, three different managers, same friggin' outcome. It don't work. Stop with the bullpen by committee. They should have re-signed Craig Kimbrell or someone else, actually. They should have re-signed someone else. Maybe bring in Adam Ottavino, whatever. Make him your closer. They should have mixed it up. Bringing in new characters after a World, Seri after a World Series win is important to me, I feel, um, because th the guys who you bring in didn't win the World Series last year. So they're going to be hungry to win, and they're going to bring that sort of drive and attitude toward a team that 
almost literally the same guys on the team this year as last year. It was almost the exact same roster with very minimum um, changes. I mean, Michael Chavis, that's about it, right? right? I mean, even the pitchers at first, uh, I think the only guy was um, the hell's his face there. Colton Brewer. I think he's the only guy that they added, um, you know, that 40 man or the 25 man roster, or whatever it was to start the season. He was the only new face and, uh, you know, he's not going to, he's not going to impress you in a lot of ways. So <clears throat> in any case, so that's, uh, that's the first challenge they have rest of the matchups. They got sale, Chris sale versus Yanni, uh, Chirinos, who's got a 3.29 ERA. These guys just amazing ERAs. Uh, David price, Versus Charlie Morton, of course, former uh, Astro. He's uh, he's got a two point six one ERA in the American League East. Um, that is one run lower, one whole run lower than David Price's ERA. So, and the Rays are at home. So we'll see. You know, the Red Sox have taken care of some business with the Rays. They're really the only team that good team that the Red Sox have been able to put away this year. So let's see how that rolls. Then, and this is the kicker, they're at home. Uh, for four games to the Yankees. Now, this is the Yankee, the first home series with the Yankees because London doesn't count. I don't count that. That was not, it, Technically, that was a Red Sox home game, but they're playing in freaking Europe, so it's not. Okay, so let's see how the Red, the Red Sox have been horrible at home this year, basically stumbling at a 500 clip at home. I think they might be one or two games, they're like one game over 500 or something. It doesn't matter. They stink at home. Um... So they're at home for four, and then looking at that, one of them's a, uh, oh no, the doubleheaders in the Bronx. Uh, you're going to get Porcello, Kashner, Erod, and presumably Sale. You don't, you don't know what you're going to get from Sale. I mean, he could strike out 12 and still give up five runs, so who knows. Um, so that's your pitching matchup. If that makes you feel good, Porcello and Kashner going the first two games. If that makes you feel good, you're actually sick and you need to see a doctor. Okay, so if you're feeling good about that matchup, please go see your physician immediately. Uh, then, Rays at home for three. Okay. Um, and then now you're right at the deadline, though. All right, so at that point, I think the first two Rays games happened before the trade deadline, and then the last um, Rays game is August first. Uh, but you're gonna know you're gonna know who this team is and what we're gonna do about this team by Saturday morning of this week. Mark my words. Saturday morning of this week, we will know. And as we proceed into the you know through the weekend and into next week, um, I think you're gonna see Dave Dombrowski make moves, whether it's buying or selling um but then after that they also are in the bronx for uh four games one of them is a double header so you literally you have 14 games coming up against the rays and the yankees and if that doesn't scare you it should because this this is literally it this is it they have to bring it i wrote down in my notes um i think anything less than 10 and 4 during that stretch which is a lot to ask anything less than 10 and 4 i think you get, i think you just got to cut your losses with this season move some pieces um i wouldn't i wouldn't add anything if they go 7 and 7 or if they have a sub 500 um uh, win loss percentage after this i think you got to i think you got to sell so at this point now who do you sell uh, a lot of people are saying sell everyone Right, um, Mookie Betts, J.D. Martinez, everyone, Ben Intendi, you know, possibly Michael Chavis. I don't know what people think. I think there are right now on this team there are two untouchables, um, maybe three, uh, two untouchables, position players. So Devers and Bogarts are untouchable. I mean, you just signed Bogarts to a five-year deal. He's going to be the cornerstone of, of your team moving forward. I think this is his team right now with Mookie Betts struggling. Um, Rafael Devers is, is looking like he's going to be a superstar in this league, so he's he's not going anywhere. I would hold on to Christian Vasquez as well. 
think he's starting to come into his own. He's having a good season offensively. I don't know what sort of vitamins he's taking or anything like that. Uh, but whatever, he's he's looking pretty good. Um, I would not move him because then you have what do you have? You have Sandy Leone and like whoever's the minor the Pawtucket catcher. Like you know, you got rid of Blake Swihart, so you can't really get rid of Christian Vasquez. At least not, at least not this season, right? So I think everyone else is everyone else is in in fair play. Although I would say this, I would. I wouldn't trade Mookie Betts unless you're getting a, a, a prospect haul for this guy. You know, he, he's been heating up recently, which is nice to see. So, you know, again, I don't know if that's the type of guy that you want to see go. He's under your control for another, basically another year and a half. Uh, do you want to wait it out so you can make anything happen next year, move some pieces? I mean, the Red Sox are rich enough as a team where they can basically restructure and overhaul um their entire lineup a lot of a lot of uh, money's going to come off the books this year but andrew benintendi i've seen you now this is your fourth year i believe um i don't know smell you later he, he doesn't really do anything for me he, he has some potential but again you know if you can get good pieces back for him make the trade jackie bradley jr i don't know who wants you I don't know what you would get back for him. Uh, if someone wants you and they want to put a package together and they're going to give you some some decent prospects, even if it's mid-level prospects, make the trade. Bring up Bruce Castillo, right? Have the team take his salary or whatever. Bring Bruce Castillo up. Who cares at this point? Well, his salary. Uh, well, if you're going to be trading people, you, you know, shed the salary, bring up Bruce Whatever. He's having a pretty good year in, in, in Pawtucket. Not that anyone cares about him. The, the stupid, One of the stupidest signings in the history of the Red Sox. Um, again, we, we sort of discussed bets. Um, Devers off limits. Bogart's off limits. I'm just kind of going around the horn here. Um, I would trade Brock Holt. He's going to be a free agent. I'd, I'd trade him. He has some value. Uh, great utility player. I'd trade him. What the hell? Who cares? All right. If, if you love him that much, and I know Boston, we love our little Brock Stock. If you love him that much, you can re-sign him in the offseason. Okay? So let's get rid of him for now. And then we can always re-sign him in the offseason. If you actually wanted to do that. Like the Red Sox said that with John Lester and didn't do anything. But the Yankees did it with Araldus Chapman. They got a lot of good prospects out of it. And they re-signed the guy. Go figure. Fire truck going by. Um, and then... I would, I would absolutely see what you could get from Michael Chavis. I would, uh, because you got Bobby Dahlbeck and uh, a couple other guys down at, at, at the minor leagues, um, uh, Tristan Cassis. You get a bunch of guy corner infielders who project to be pretty good, same type of numbers as Chavis. So go ahead, trade Chavis. Go ahead, see what you can get back from him. If, if it's good, see what you can get for him. As far as pitchers go, I would trade anyone in the bullpen. Um, you know, for a bag of peanuts, bag of balls, rosin bag, um, you know, brick from Fenway Park. Like, what? you know, it's just like any of those guys are smell you later. Uh, you, but you're not going to get anything for them because they all suck. Um, you're not going to be able to trade Chris Sale because you just gave him a contract extension. And no one's going to no one's going to bite on him after the year he's had uh, again, unless the team was stupid or crazy yeah, call it the Mets you know I don't, I don't know maybe it'll take sale um, I would trade David Price absolutely if someone's willing to take him smell you later uh, Rick Porcello see you later love Rick met the guy great guy very nice to my son very personable uh, cojones of steel obviously in the playoffs last year um, bye right Cashner, bye. Like, who cares? You just you just got him. Maybe you can flip him for something. And again, I, I'm not playing this game when we talk about, well, what are you getting back? I mean, if the deal's good and it makes sense and you're getting these players back, I want a prospect haul at this point. Um, I want pitchers um, because you're not really, you're not going to lose too much as far as position players next year if you don't trade people. Um, you're going to lose Jackie Bradley Jr. That's the player you're going to lose. And guess what? Bye-bye.
Bye bye So I think that's where we're at. And, um, you know, if the Red Sox are buyers, you know, let's say they go 10 and four, let's say they go 11 and three, let's say they, they sweep the whole damn thing. Suddenly you're like, whoa, what the hell? What's going on now? You know, I, I guess you look at the San Francisco Giants uh, relievers who have probably one of the most underrated bullpens in the NL. Uh, maybe you raid that thing, you raid that, ca you know, cabinet. Um, but, you know, there are no names out there that are, you know, there's been uh, talk of the Mets closer there. I don't know. None of these guys impressed me. I would have preferred to have Craig Kimbrell. I mean, I know he didn't have a great second half last year, but we, we know what he's capable of. And um, defining that role makes other guys better. And whether whether you want to blame Dombrowski, whether you want to blame um, John Henry, that's your prerogative. But um, they done screwed up the offseason. And now you're now you're seeing what what that's led to. So uh, that's it for Sox Vlogs, July 22nd, 2019. I'm Mark Chikaris. Uh It's brought to you by Guy Boston Sports over at GuyBostonSports.com. Um, podcasts dropping every Friday. Uh, Balls Deep Red Sox Baseball Podcast, which can be found on the website. Uh, or you can download it on iTunes and subscribe. Uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And hopefully the next time you hear me either on the podcast or on a Sox vlog, um, there's a little bit more positive news. Um, I think this team is capable of going on a run. They just haven't done it yet really at all. I mean, what was it? They won, they won five games in a row once. You know, they need to pull one of these, uh, you know, Oakland A's a bunch of years ago where they like, you know, they ripped off 22 out of 24. Right, they won 22 out of 24, or whatever that ridiculous number was. This is a long time ago, and like Miguel Tejada still played for the A's. But that that's the type of stretch they need to go on. Um, and in that case, now you're talking about maybe even winning the division. But, you know, let's be honest with ourselves and with, you know, be honest with ourselves, be honest with each other. Do you think that this Red Sox team is capable of that? I obviously don't. All right, we will catch you next time. Sox Flogs, July 22nd. Enjoy the rest of your week.